Okay, so Frosty Boy, he has uh, kind of been in the spotlight recently. Well, not spotlight, more just spoken about in the community because Frost pretty much has been indirectly buffed multiple times, especially since the armor stripping changes update and the recent update, which introduced overguard gating and his new augment, which gives him overguard plus the cold changes. For those of you that don't know, overguard is now gated, meaning when your overguard breaks, you get 0.5 seconds of invulnerability, stopping you from getting getting one-shotted. This is on top of shield gating, which is crazy because we now have two gating mechanics for all frames that have shields. Now, Frost's new augment allows you to give yourself and your allies overguard every time you cast your fourth ability avalanche. And cold has been changed in the recent update. You can now do nine stacks of cold, and now the slow effect goes up to 90%. And on top of this, you deal an extra 50% critical damage against enemies that have nine stacks of cold. Frost plus all the other changes is actually in a really good position right now. Now I know he's an OG frame, but the truth is I have actually barely played him before this update and I've sunk multiple former in him and I did some testing and well, he's amazing for defense or any other objectives that you need to defend and circuit at the moment, he is very, very good. He was always good apparently, but now he's a lot better. Let us begin. Abilities. Passive useless i'll be honest enemies have a chance to be frozen when hitting you with a melee mid just just rework it it needs a rework change my mind biting frost should be his passive anyway first ability is freeze it is what you think it is freezes an enemy the only use of this ability is to pop his bubbles and maybe proc some cold effects on enemies or freeze one enemy that's it it's it's otherwise it's useless second ice wave cast the ice wave does zero damage applies cold Again, mid ability needs a rework. This is my subsume slot for him, in my opinion. Frost needs a full rework, in my opinion, but he has been indirectly buffed a lot. It's weird. Anyway, his third is part of his bread and butter. Cast down a globe, but this is quite a complex ability, so stay with me here. Frost throws down a snow globe, which is this bubble that becomes invulnerable for four seconds when casted, which has HP, which is scaled off of ability strength and also off of Frost's base armor. And during the four... And during the four seconds of invulnerability, incoming damage is absorbed and then converted into extra health for the globe. You cannot shoot into the globe, but you can shoot out of the globe. This applies to you, your allies, and enemies as well. Your friends are dying? Yeah. Defense targets? Yep. Corridors? Yeah. Excavation and mobile defense? You get the point. That's not all. When you cast this globe while enemies are in the radius, these enemies are frozen for three seconds and they are pushed out. And if they hit any obstacles or wall, they will take damage up to 50% of their maximum health as true damage. I will explain something later. This is actually not particularly true. For those of you that don't know, true damage is damage that just doesn't give a shit. Here is where things are weird. This is a very inconsistent and weird ability for me when I did some testing. The damage that is dealt is just purely inconsistent in every way. Sometimes it doesn't do any damage if you cast the globe on enemies and sometimes the enemies if they are yeeted from the outside of the ring just don't take any damage. It appears you do the most amount of damage if you cast your globe while standing right on top of them or right next to them. It's kind of like the damage dealt is pretty much based off of the speed at which the enemies hit the obstacle or basically the velocity. That's pretty much what I've come to the conclusion. It probably is that, but again, it's inconsistent. Now, this is where things become weird, where I explain how the 50% thing isn't really true. If you apply viral, you will do more damage and potentially one-shot your enemies, even though its damage dealt is supposed to be up to 50% of their HP. And if you put raw on, you do even more damage with the viral procs as well. It's very weird and it's a wonky ass ability. And honestly, there is so much to it, but the main attraction is the fact that it protects targets and in normal play you won't really be using this pushing mechanic to kill enemies and nuke per se unless you're doing survival and you are in corridors or tight spaces now you can also pop this globe with your one as well but you can only pop it from the outside and not the inside that's a lot i, I know but there are some weird synergies with this ability but honestly that's really all you need to know about it without min maxing or trying to figure out everything that is the basics about that ability his fourth ability basically just freezes enemies in a radius and armor strips them amazing ability and with the new augment you give yourself and your allies over guard as well so his fourth is just amazing honestly that's his abilities done 
Now, onto the builds first, then I'll explain some problems with Frost and certain synergies that you can do. Okay, so I didn't edit this normally. I kind of just want to free talk this because I want to explain things as we go along. So for the first setup here, we use a narrow setup. And the reason why I did this is because generally any frame that you want to... Oh, there's a hot fix. Generally, when you want to do circuit, you want to have nourish on any frame that you want to play. Why? Because the biggest problem with circuit is your energy sustain unless you get the correct decrees. And nourish is just an absolutely... S tier subsume or any frame that goes into circuit in my opinion because then your energy sustain is a lot better because you do not have a companion. This can be used in normal star chart and steel path missions as well if you are struggling with energy but I generally run equilibrium and arc and energize on my setup so there's no reason to run both. I just put it here for the times that we're running circuit. Now Frost is actually pretty balanced and you can run a pretty much medium and balanced setup and he's quite comfortable. I do boost the spite so I can shield gate, prime show for obviously not everyone has this use whatever you have available you can use anything this is a flexible slot prime flow one of the biggest problems with frost is he only has 425 energy at max and honestly he needs a little bit more because yeah you spam quite a bit with him so you can go efficiency as well because you spam your fourth and your third a lot great Anyway, so putting in some Archon Shards for extra energy is not a bad idea. We run a decent amount of strings so that we can get 100% armor strip for this setup we have here. And then, of course, I see Avalon. With range, you actually don't want to have too much range with Frost. And I'll explain why in a segment later on in the video. So this is the Nourish. We can use Arcane Energize. This is flexible. You could just use Equilibrium. If you're running Nourish, you don't need Equilibrium. You can switch this out for anything else or change the polarity and so on. And you don't need to run Energize because your energy sustain will be pretty easy with Nourish. Moving on, we have Raw. Now this setup is used for when we want to do big damage with Snow Globe and also just general buffing for your weapons as well. This is like a Raw slash Eclipse setup. It's used for both. Raw is just will increase your true damage from Snow Globe. Pretty much the exact same, except I change this to Orga Reach. You can use normal stretch, that's fine too. And then we have Ensnare. Now, Ensnare is actually very, very good. Now, the reason why Ensnare is so amazing is because Frost freezes all your enemies. And every other pool helmet, like Magpool, Lava, and so on and so on, does not pull frozen enemies except for in snare now this can be really good for grouping up your enemies and then literally casting your snow globe while grouping all the enemies that are frozen together and just shooting them out and doing a whole bunch of true damage it's actually a really really good synergy and i haven't tested air burst from zephyr but as far as i know in snare is the only pool that actually allows you to pull frozen enemies in and that's why we run in snare it's really really good it allows you to do some funny stuff with avalanche and snow globe it's it's really fun and satisfying this setup is slightly lower strength and also we are running a double augment setup and the reason why we're doing that is because we can use biting frost which gains 200% critical chance and 200% critical damage against frozen enemies now obviously frost freezes all enemies so whichever weapon you're using it's red crit central and bigger damage numbers as well then i see avalanche of course and then i run my usual equilibrium energize because i am spam i spam a lot and that's my three frost setups that is pretty much the what i found to be the best helmets and the best setups that i can to be quite comfortable and just have fun with the setup you will not have 100 percent armor reduction one very quick note Molt augmented will sort that out for you so yeah and if also you do not have prime show footed then you can just use power drift which will bring that up to 100 percent now with regards to the other setups you can also run a double augment as well same thing, you can drop Equilibrium and go Biting Frost if you're running the Naru setup. That works too as well. Archon Shards, I do not have any Archon Shards on him, but definitely 100% casting speed no doubt definitely at least two shards for casting speed on him i don't have it on because i'm poor on bile but yes casting speed and extra energy would be really really nice and maybe a little bit of a bump of strength to get the 100 armor strip if you don't run enough strength if you run primary frostbite that is also not a bad idea to run with any weapon that you're running so that you could do slightly more damage but primary frostbite is kind of weird because you lose the flat damage so you would have to switch out one of your mods to have serration for extra flat damage 
damage. That's another synergy that you can maybe just play around and test with and have fun. And that is all the frost abilities. Now remember why I explained early on in the builds why you don't want to have too much range. And the reason why I stand by that is for the simple fact that if you are running defense or something like that, whether it's a relic run, whether it's circuit, whether it's just a random mission at base steel pulse or anything like that, if you have so much range and you cast your four, you are freezing enemies, which technically slows down the mission. And you don't want that, especially for defense and so on. So you want to kind of get a medium range, which is why I went for like 145 between there, 175 max range so that it gives it about 20 ish, 25 to 30 meters of your avalanche's cast, which allows the enemies to get out of the spawn and, you know, show their faces so that you can actually kill them to speed up the rounds of defense missions. Max range will rather help you with something like mobile defense and so on. But even then, having too much range will affect your globe, which is tedious because you don't actually want to have a bigger globe you want to kind of have it small around the target the defense target or the excavators or the mobile defense targets so that you can block all the damage this is where the issue comes in with icy avalanche now i know i said it's an absolutely amazing open which it kind of is it's a really great orb move because it gives you two instances of gating for yourself and then it gives overguard for your allies which is strong in itself but there is a problem avalanche is a slow casting ability and you will need casting speed and even then 0.5 seconds and so on is going to be tough at steel part of all the enemies are facing you unless you're inside the bubble then it's a different story however i see avalanche's range is affected by the range of avalanche itself it's not like steinax's augment where it's an affinity range which is arguably a lot better in that case so it's very difficult to decide whether you want to go higher range to support your teammates more but then you're slowing down the mission by freezing a lot more enemies and so on so that is where it becomes a little bit tedious i guess that's the word we could use so having a little bit of range is honestly the best in this situation for me because it allows you to have the best of both worlds but if it is a defense then 20 meters is wide enough for you to pretty much always give overguard it doesn't stack so on the recast the overguard value uses the highest value from the original or recast this means that every time that you cast avalanche it must be higher than the original value so this is where it kind of falls short and is not as good as as for example Steinaxis which has infinite scaling. Also the amount of overguard given is also affected by ability strength. I see Avalanche is good but it also has its drawbacks. And that is pretty much it. In terms of the actual missions for Frost and what he's good for, I don't think he's really great for anything other than survival, defense, excavation, or anything where you have to protect a target. Again, I think with the decree system, he's going to be, or he is really, really, really good in circuit at the moment. Frost is in a really good spot right now. I hope he does get a rework for his passive and maybe his one or two at least, but he's three and four, perfect. I quite surprised about frost because i never paid any attention to him but now that i have paid some attention to him i'm glad i did because he's actually really fun and i'm probably going to play him quite a bit now for some defense missions because he's really just laid back play starts it's really nice overall that is my frost video i hope you guys enjoyed it i tried to stay away from like that script kind of thing and try to make it more natural so let me know if you guys prefer it like this or you prefer just me talking from a script i prefer just letting it roll off the tongue and just talking and yeah don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and i will see you all in the next one thank you so much have a good one and enjoy frost try him out he's worth it